Okay, uh, just to bring back reference, of course, this is August 21st, 2010, 8.51 a.m., and the beginning of a new tape, I'm pretty sure it is, and what we're taping right now is uh, we're back on the part two of the Pro Comp head. Uh, this has been one of the most interesting and intriguing heads. Telephone, sorry. Okay, anyway, back to, these are the Pro Comp uh, 003 or 1003 or 003 small block Chevrolet 210 cc runner is what they claim uh, it was not 210 it was 206 it was 4 cc's under what they claim now what I'm doing right now is the combustion chamber work and this was a good head to give an example on uh, let me get the date off okay problem is with these heads, like any of them, is when they, uh, of course, they, the heads are cast, uh, combustion chambers are, which is not too bad. I, there's not big no holes or anything. But when they go in there to machine the head, they, of course, they relocate the guide or, or locate it, position it. Then they put the seat in there. Well, the problem is when they put the seat inside the head, what you've got going on here is this... Um, tremendous overhang uh, a lot of people call a machinist ridge where the valve job was done and there's a big hump here I don't think you're going to be able to see it with the camera because of the way it is but basically right there's the seat and right there is the top of it what you're talking about is around 125 thousandths or so of meat and what you have to do is you have to grind downward and then clip this area off because you don't want no overhang right here you want it to come straight off that seat and roll into the combustion chamber okay and uh, let me show you a couple of them that are done here's a totally finished combustion chamber to 400 grip and as you can see, I, I think you can, there's not much of a hump at all. It's pretty much perfectly flat. It's just got a little bit of a roll. But see, when the valve, when, when the 30 degree angle comes up and rolls, it ain't got a wall right here with a big thick piece of aluminum where the um, seat was cut into the cylinder head and your machinist ridge is in the way. Now over here is the starting mark process. All right, I got a little bit better view on that than what I thought it would. Okay, you can see how I ground that way and then ground that way with a pull and didn't even touch this seat on either side of it. So my seats are good. But you can just tell there's a, a trench, okay, if you will, that goes straight down off of that thread on that spark plug goes down rolls into it and then comes straight across then what I'll do is I'll take my straight bit and start gnawing at that and level it to where it goes into it now typically I always have a couple of undersized valves in the combustion chamber but we got a problem this time and I think I can show you uh, the guides in this head using a hydraulic cam with just 480 lift after about uh, six months and it was a street car the guides were totally wore out in the head now and on behalf of the head in defense of the head the tops of the retainers looked like somebody had used a factory GM Chevrolet type rocker because it had marks where it had beat the tops of the retainers and if it did that that's what's happened it uh, didn't have good geometry and the friction probably wore the damn guides out or the valve in the guide as a matter of fact um, two of the valves no four of the valves wasn't even usable and it, and one of them was two of them was bent on the seat but the other one was in the stems so it concurred with the way the guides were wore it had over a thousandths and a half taper Okay, anyway, let's see if we can get you another angle shot right here um, from the side. Maybe I'll give you a little bit better uh, benchmark to know how much you're cutting. Okay, now you can see it a little bit better. Okay. And 
our little trench, like I said, it ain't big, but mainly it's just to keep it where when that valve opens up, it hits a 30 degree angle, it's starting to bend. And then all of a sudden, you got this big lump of aluminum right here. So what's, what happens is it's going to turn around and hit this wall and try to bend that air again. So from about right here to right here, you got a spot that ain't flowing near as much air as other areas in the head because of this brick wall. Uh, actually, what they there's a name for it. It's either called a mask um, or it's called a, a a curtain, I do believe, and it's a it's a it's an angle of spray that when the valve opens up, is lift increases and goes down, the area of, of unshroud, which is our, our curtain, starts to spread out. Well, if you've got something in the way, it won't let it do it, and it will spray out of the other area. Perfect example, as the valve lifts up here to about 300 lift, all the air is trying to go this way because this area here is shrouded. As the valve lifts, it needs more air. You actually have to cut part of the chamber out to let the thing breathe. That's why the big block Chevrolet head works so well because the big block Chevrolet head ain't straight. It's angled off to the side and as it lifts, it goes away from that combustion chamber wall and of course all this is clear. All right, so we understand why we're doing it and um, trying to get away from that wall. We can't go over it, so we cut the wall down like mowing the grass and let our beautiful little stream of air come and roll right on out of here. I will cut it in that area too. So let's let me let you see what it looks like in action.